Now for what's trending in true crime, a Florida judge ordered the documents from Jeffrey Epstein's 2006 grand jury proceedings to be released to the public. Judge Luis Delgado, who referred to the Epstein case, uh, and Jeffrey Epstein rather, as the most infamous pedophile in American history went on to say, quote, the testimony taken by the grand jury concerns activity ranging from grossly unacceptable to rape. All of the conduct at issue is sexually deviant, disgusting, and criminal, end quote. Now, our Scripps affiliate WPTV breaks down the details. Within the depth of 200 pages, there's page 129. The last time I went there, he engaged in intercourse. How old were you then? It was the day before my 18th birthday. How many children they could have saved if they just would have done the right thing? Brad Edwards represented more than 250 Jeffrey Epstein victims. I wouldn't want to be the state attorney's office. He argues this testimony of raping a 17-year-old girl within these documents should have created more severe charges. But these are people who now have to live with a life of embarrassment for carrying water for Jeffrey Epstein. Back then, Epstein just pled guilty to two prostitution charges. He served 13 months in jail before receiving a work release. In a statement, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, David Ehrenberg, says, today is my first time seeing these documents, saying it never possessed them or had access to them. He also said this case occurred before he took office. Worth noting, two members of the state attorney's office brought the evidence to the grand jury. Those attorneys accuse a 16-year-old girl of lying about her $250,000 income and age on her MySpace page. The prosecutor also asked if she was aware she was committing a crime by taking money for sexual favors. That sets a real tone for uh, and, and shows what the state attorney's office was really trying to get across. The jury would ask victims similar questions, asking if they knew they were committing a crime or if they were aware of what they were doing to their reputation. In one instance, a juror asked a victim why she didn't ask Epstein to stop having sex with her. It was designed to get a certain result and a certain result was achieved. Why they did that, I have no idea. The grand jury testimony ended with the chief investigator for the state attorney's office going through various police reports about the victims involving alcohol, drugs, and missing person reports. It is boils your blood, doesn't it? Now, we know Epstein died uh, by suicide. That's the report. Some dispute that in 2019 while awaiting his trial for federal sex trafficking charges. And his death left hundreds of victims behind without any true justice. So this morning, we're asking the question, why would these prosecutors not go after this pedophile? Let's bring in our power panel. Want to welcome in entertainment reporter Kinsey Schofield and criminal defense attorney and former district attorney Matthew Mangino, still with us, trial attorney and law professor Dante Mills. These prosecutors who turned a blind eye ought to lose their jobs, if any of them are still in the office. This was so long ago. Uh, Matthew Mangino, let me start with you. Your thoughts, please. Well, it's really outrageous uh, to look at uh, these transcripts to uh, hear what was said and done during um, these proceedings. I mean, they, they in reality, they tried to turn the table on the victims, uh, tried to intimidate them. That Did you know you were committing a crime? These are underage girls who have been lured uh, to Jeffrey Epstein's to, to engage in, in sexual activity. I mean, there's hundreds of victims. The transcript seems to be replete with serious criminal charges. And yet those charges were not followed through on. And, it, and it's really, uh, you know, a bad look uh, for federal prosecutors in South Florida in, in 2005 and 2006. And definitely, definitely, Matthew. If anybody's still in that office from the time, they need to be held accountable now, in my view. I've got, I've got a clip from one of the victims uh, coming forward now with the document release. Uh, her name is Haley. Let's take a listen. We were kids. Kids. Children. I was sexually abused by this man the same way all the other women were sexually abused. Um, I was sexually assaulted by him. I was intimidated the same way, um, exploited the same way. I think a lot of the predators look at women like Jeffrey did. Um, broken homes, abusive homes, mm -hmm. um, you know, younger girls or children that uh, don't necessarily have the guidance or the upbringing. And I think they, f they feed off of that and it becomes 
an easier target for them. I watched her whole interview and she talks about how this is something you never heal from. It haunts you day after day after day. And these prosecutors were in a position to stop it. It makes me sick. Kinsey Schofield, want to go to you next. Your thoughts here on what these prosecutors didn't do for victims like Haley. Absolutely. Well, I've been monitoring kind of the chatter online in response to this story and very similar to your take, it's absolute outrage. These systems are supposed to be put in place to protect us and our loved ones, but clearly this man was shown special privilege and people want to know why. Um, you know, it, it was very brave of that stepmother to report this that started that domino effect, the kind of chaos that would have created in the home and for what, when ultimately um, he was given in such a lenient sentence, uh, it really, it, it, it's insulting, um, it's concerning. And then you talk about some of those prosecutors, where are they now? Uh, I think we're, a lot of us are curious as to that, but you are seeing people that re remained associated with Jeffrey Epstein, like Elaine Maxwell, like Prince Andrew. Uh, now those people are being punished, some actually thrown in jail, uh, otherwise financially, um, but it's guilt by association. You're right, Kinsey. You're absolutely right. You know, what What was it about this, this filthy, I don't even know what to call him, filthy pedophile, um, I, I was going to say animal, but that's, that's no, that's too nice. I love animals. Um, he's, he's just a filthy, disgusting, pedophile predator. And, and these people were in a position to stop it. We, we heard the, in the piece how, you know, now the state attorney, back then he wasn't the state attorney, but now it's Dave Ehrenberg. How I wish he would have been in office. This would have never happened. He would have locked him up and made sure they threw away the key. Uh, but whomever was in office, it makes you wonder about the corruption. Uh, Dante Mills, last but certainly not least, want to go to you for your take on this and what might have been going on that made these people turn a blind eye? It's a horrific situation, um, but I'll, I'll go positive in the sense that we're a different nation now. We have a different legal system where we trust and believe in victims. Um, and you see here in these transcripts, uh, just from the testimony that they were trying to make sure that these victims will be believable. They talked about uh, them lying about their income on the MySpace as if if they lied on their MySpace and the jury wouldn't believe that they were sexually assaulted. Um, why didn't they say stop? Things like that, that now as a society, we don't have an expectation for a victim to try to take control over a situation. I think people are more understanding of that. And I and I and I, if we're trying to look for a positive in a situation, it's the fact that we are different now. And I think we believe victims more, um, which was necessary. Uh, and, and I think it really shows us how far we've come because those things should have never been looked over and those charges should have come a long time ago, but now we're in a different place. Yeah, you're right, Dante. We are in a far better place. Appreciate that perspective. You know, and these documents we know revealed almost 20 years of misconduct and sex crimes against minors. We understand there are more than 125 victims. And so our next question now, what is the most shocking part of this document dump, these revelations? Is it the number of victims? Is it the fact that the way prosecutors commenced uh, this grand jury presentation, uh, perhaps skew things? What is it that stuns you the most? Let's bring back in our power panel and ask them that same question. Matthew Mangino, back to you. Well, well, Julie, I mean, look at what was going on here. Uh, you know, when you hear about these transcripts, you know, people were escorting these children in into a back room so so that he could sexually assault them. Uh, he said there's a whole apparatus set up by Epstein to facilitate, uh, you know, the, this this situation. And and the fact that 125 victims. Uh, could be involved in this and somehow it could continue for years and years and years. Even after it had been reviewed by a grand jury, he had been arrested, he had been convicted and he served time in jail. Yet this whole process could continue to victimize people. It's amazing that that could somehow fly under the radar from anybody who wanted to hold him and the others involved accountable. That's right. Kinsey Schofield, tell us please, what stuns you the most? 
I mean, unfortunately, it's the details. Uh, I've watched every Epstein documentary that Hollywood has produced over the last few years. And obviously, um, you know, for it's for entertainment value. So they're not going to make it as gruesome as some of these details were. So to me, reading through and actually having to imagine being in that position as a young woman was absolutely horrific. And my heart goes out to them. And obviously, you know, you sit back and it makes you so angry that there wasn't someone there to protect them and somebody that could step in because it they feel so out in the open and it's so audacious. I mean, um, and I was just shocked at, at the way it felt like everybody was just kind of in the know and going with the flow. That's right. Final word to you, Dante Mills. Uh, what stuns you the most, please? Yeah, not only that everybody was in the know and going with the flow, but the scope of it. So when you have someone that commits these type of crimes as a sick pedophile and, and, and things of that nature, normally they're acting alone. They're hiding in the shadows um, and they're impacting whoever they can. You know, they, 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 they find ways to search out people and, and, and haunt or stalk their victims. In this situation, you had a network of people that were providing and facilitating um, a, a, a way for these crimes to be committed and for this pedophile to continue to impact as many people as possible. So you're not talking about an isolated criminal here. Um, you're talking about a network of people that work together to impact these young ladies. And I think that's just a horrific situation because you're multiplying the amount of victims that's there. Uh, and, and, and I think that whenever somebody hears of anything like this happening, there has to be somebody in that process that steps out and says, I can't allow this to go on anymore. You're right, Dante. Uh, we need more courageous people uh, who stand up to people like Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. We'll leave it there for now. Great discussion. Thank you all for being here. Kinsey Schofield, Matthew Mangino, Dante Mills, thank you all for your time and expertise this morning. We'll see you soon.